Welcome to Talk Flicks with Just Chicks today. And we are going to be talking about Little. Every morning. No! Ding dong! Ding dong! Month. I really think I could help this company if you just gave me a chance. Just concentrate on being my assistant. Were you always mean? I got big and I got rich. So now who gonna check me, boo? I wish you were my age. Then I'd check you, boo. I wish you were little. I told you, watch it. Jesus. What is going on? Is this rich people most fakes? Put me in the middle of that. Oh, who are you? Well, I'm April with the A for available. <laughs> so this was a film um, directed by uh, Tina Gordon. No, she pitched the idea for oh, it. Oh, gotcha, how the story gotcha, goes. Gotcha, is that gotcha. She pitched the idea to uh, a producer, and a producer loved the idea. And I guess they got some screenwriters and directors and stuff okay, attached. Okay, and, okay, okay. Um, yeah, so she has an executive producer credit, actually the youngest executive producer in history. So this is a movie starring uh, Regina Hall, Issa Rae, and what's his name again? Marcia Martin? Marcia? Marcia? I don't know. Sorry, Mrs. Martin. We'll just call her yeah, that. Miss, Miss Martin. Miss Martin, Miss Martin, ma'am. Miss Martin, ma'am. Miss Martin, ma'am. Miss Martin, ma'am. Please, Miss um, Martin, ma'am. And it also had uh, the uh, brother in there from uh, This Is Us. Uh, what's his name? His name is uh, Justin Hartley. What are the things that you liked about this film? One of the things that I liked about this movie was that it had a lot of huge laugh out loud moments. Mm -hmm. um, and I felt the comedy was spot on for the audience that they were trying to target. Absolutely. Um, I feel like if you are not in tune with black culture, then a lot of these laughs are going to go over your head. This is definitely a movie for a specific uh, population group. This is not for a mainstream consumption. And I think that kind of contributes to the mixed reviews that this yeah, movie is receiving right absolutely. now. Not that <clears throat> the things, um, there aren't some negative things about this movie, which we can get into yeah, a little we'll bit get later, into but, that, but yeah. there are some warranted criticisms for this movie, but this movie is a good time at the movies. Yes, um, yeah. Again, one thing I, I love Issa Rae. She's she's one of my my favorites um, out there. Um, and so when I saw she was going to be in, I knew it was going to be funny because she is hilarious. Um, and just the concept I thought was kind of interesting. Um, so uh, and then the the trailers, you know you know what made that trailer. concept so interesting though is because we've seen this trope a million times in mainstream media. Mm -hmm. It was nice to see it from a person of color's perspective. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, and the trailers were hilarious. So it was just, you know, it, it had, you know, really uh, good comedy in there. Um, it was shot uh, well. Um, and I think it just, you know, it had a, a pretty diverse cast in there. So, you know, you had... Um, you know, a mixture of different people, whether they were just kind of like extras or kind of supporting characters. I thought um, it had a fairly decent mix of people in there. Um, you know, with the Asian kid and then, uh, you know, black people in there, you had white people in there. Um, so I did like that it had a little bit of diversity in there. Um, and the runtime was great. It was close to 90 minutes. The key elements for me uh, I think it was the runtime was 109 so um, like I said it wasn't a, a long movie but you know it was one that they kept your interest um, it wasn't something where there was a whole bunch of you know kind of lowly moments I mean there were some moments where you just kind of like you know maybe the acting or something wasn't good but um, it wasn't something where you're just like yeah. can this so movie let's, end let's get into the acting <laughs> let's get into it so um, well, speaking of Issa Rae, because you said that's one of your your favorites, I have never seen her, and I've heard of her, but I've never seen mm -hmm. her in anything. Mm -hmm. Um, and I have to say, because of this movie, I'm a little bit unimpressed. Um, she did deliver some laughs. Uh, I will give her that. Yeah, but like her, like 
the dramatic um she's not dramatic she's not were dramatic. that's not very her. cringy <laughs> and it wasn't just her it wasn't just her regina king was extremely cringy it, her name is not and regina king her, i'm sorry don't don't mix up the king with the queen <laughs> i had been trying so hard not to do that but yeah I knew it was gonna yeah happen. yeah regina hall you know and she is an excellent whether it's comedy or drama mm -hmm. and so to see some of her lines be live be delivered in such a cringy tone was really um kind of threw me off a little bit um i felt like the character that they were having her portray was just not conveyed very well with the delivery um, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie The Proposal with Sandra Bullock and Ryan Reynolds. Um, it's been a, a group ago. Yeah, but uh, Sandra Bullock's character is the tone that I think they were trying to go for, mm -hmm. and it just really missed the mark. And I felt like if they could have delivered more of a character that leaned more towards what that What side, do you feel could have been done? Like, like, give examples of like how it could have been better or what could have been done. To make it less, I guess, cringeworthy. Well, I feel like instead of trying to use every opportunity as um, comedic relief to really build up the main story plot, which was that she was insecure and she was trying to hide behind money and, and not give people a chance to hurt her. <clears throat> and there are a myriad of ways you could have done that without it being and I mean I'm not saying I mean yes this is a comedy movie but it's also a movie trying to tell a story and I felt they could have done that in a more serious way at least in some places and um, you know it almost made you question like well how does she even get a thriving business like this because she know? was she because stepped on people's on people's head and toes to minus get there. minus the the beginning scene you never really get a sense of her level of intelligence all you get from her is her level of attitude and her um uh just feeling like she's owed everything because she finally arrived or because she's arrived and I feel like it was kind of a missed opportunity to show black women in a different light. Um, because the, we, we go through this. We do go through this where we think, you know, I'm being teased because of my hair or my skin color, you know, the clothes that I'm wearing. Mm -hmm. But once I get older, you know, I'm going to bring it and nobody's ever going to be able to hurt me like that again. And I felt like they could have brought a more three dimensional character instead of her just constantly being the comedic relief and not even in a good way. Like some of the way the, lines were delivered some of the lines just did not work for me yeah it was kind of tyler perry-esque in some um in some ways um i think i agree with the fact that yeah they should have showed her more as an adult like her intel like her building that ai homegirl or something just to kind of you know show that you know that three dimensionality mm -hmm. to her where yes, she's, she's, you know, she's a jerk, but she's a very smart jerk and she's mm -hmm. very serious about her business and stuff like that. Um, so yes, I agree with that. Um, I mean, especially when it comes to the plot point of potentially losing her, her most business. important right. point. And so that really could have been an opportunity to show, you know, how is it that she built this business? To, how did she even snag this client in the first place? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah, they could have dove more into that and then kind of cut a lot of that school, mm -hmm. the classroom, school environment. Because that part, to me, was where the worst acting or, mm -hmm. or the scenes that I felt were the most like, you know, roll The dialogue eyes. was yeah, so... It was... Um, mm -hmm. The kids, I think, did as good as they mm -hmm. could do. I think everybody but did as good as I they think could do with the, the script. Like, it was just... Like, even, you know, the part in the classroom with the teacher or whatever. She's, you know, eyeing him like, oh, you know, he, he looks good or whatever. And then the girl who's kind of teasing her, she's like, I am school spirit. Da, 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 da. The teacher would not be letting her go on and on in this little monologue thing. Like, it, would, it just seemed like... 
<laughs> even though he was like, yeah, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get out of here. I'm trying to leave this job, you know, but it just didn't seem like an authentic classroom environment. And so mm-hmm. it just kind of took me a little bit out of the, the for story. Me, it uh, almost for that. felt then, like, like the director could not decide or the screenwriter. Well, I guess she's both couldn't decide what kind of movie she wanted this to be. And I told you this mm-hmm. last night, like I was confused on whether this was supposed to be an adult movie or a kid's movie because Mm -hmm. with the more racier parts and some of the language you really couldn't see this as a like family friendly kid movie i mean to me it was aimed towards adults but then when you have scenes like the scenes in the school right in the the school um, and kind of and some of the stuff even in the beginning it was just like okay this would totally work for a kid's movie Kids mm-hmm. would be eating this up because it's kind of, you know, silly. High school corny. musical. That's yeah. what it, it kind of I mean, was that, basically yeah. going for. Especially like when it got to the little talent show thing. I'm like, mm-hmm. okay. So it was a weird mix of some very adult humor mm-hmm. and some very childish humor. And I mean, maybe they did that intentionally. But if they did, it didn't work. Yeah. That's why I think they should have cut a lot of that school stuff. Like you could have... You know, show her having a hard time adjusting back to school because that's you know a place where a lot of people don't. Yeah, and it was back. crucial. It was crucial but, to her journey. And it was crucial but to her it journey, was but overdone. Yeah, and yeah, it was just a little bit, especially without stronger dialogue. Right, but I mean, when you're dealing with kids like that, I mean, they don't even talk about anything. I mean, you know, if you, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of hard. So that's why I think it should have just been reduced dramatically. Can I throw out a, a mainstream reference, though? I know you weren't particular on it, but um, 13 Reasons Why had mm-hmm. some excellent dialogue and character development. But those development kids were older, place. though. I mean, it this was, was what, middle school? Okay. So I feel like middle school to me, even like thinking back when I was in middle school and stuff, like my interactions with people was kind of different than what it was when I was in high school. I don't know. A lot of my friends in high school were like... I mean, it, like maybe, her, Thought they was grown, but they, they weren't grown. grown. <laughs> 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 but just like the things we talked about to me, I mean, it was still some things that were the same, but it was... I remember having very different conversations um, in, you know, middle school than high school. I mean, even like the, so, the talent show. I feel like bit. I was a lot corny. Like you Even just, you the corny. talent show bit was corny. Like, yeah. I, don't, I just felt like there would, could have been a better plot device mm-hmm. for her journey than the yeah. going back to the talent show. And so... For well, me, I mean, they kind of had to because that's where it all kind of started with her kind of like oh i can't wait till i'm big because she has this really traumatic experience at this talent show so i feel like you have to have it but maybe like i said reducing a lot of that interaction and then focusing and maybe spending more resources on having a better talent show you know because all it was was just like the band and then the cheerleaders you didn't see any other real performances except for you know her and her friend, yeah. Oh, you saw something. Yeah, yeah, so to me, that was kind of like, you. I kind of felt like it was kind of cheapened, you know what I mean? Like, it didn't. they didn't put a lot of resources and effort into that particular scene, which, again, because that's where it all started, and you have to come back to that full circle for this story to work, I feel like you have to... You have to spend, you know, more resources. I don't know. I still it, feel like feel you could have more. used a totally different scenario and your audience would have been smart enough to like see. Like not having her have that meltdown or like where she got knocked over or anything? I felt like it could have been the same knockdown could have been done in a totally different environment. Environment, yeah. And a totally different, you know, uh, scenario and resolve. Well, one of the things that she said at the beginning was like, you know, I was trying to get people excited about science and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so was that something that got taken out? Was that something that because of that experience, she didn't have that excitement about science anymore or trying to inspire people? Well, it seemed like she did because I mean, here she is the owner of a tech company. So it seemed like she kept 
deep down inside, she was still that same nerdy, mm-hmm. kind of corny girl, but mm-hmm. she had locked it down real tight because she didn't want people to, to, know. to okay. know and be hurt by it. You know, you have give mm-hmm. people opportunity to use it against her and hurt her. Um, like it had a really good message, especially for mm-hmm. like the teen tween group. But I feel like with some of the stuff that was in there, I don't even, I mean, yeah, it was PG 13. So I guess you could send teens and tweens to see that. Um, I don't know that, that, that Jay holiday came on. That's too well, much. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, I feel like it is, but then I've seen some stuff that some of these kids watch. Uh, and you and know I'm what? Like, I had not heard that song in a long time, so I was in there like Girl, jamming, jamming so hard. <laughs> like, yes, where are you, Jay Holiday? He's still on music. He's still his tour. That's so why I, I follow him on Facebook. But um, yeah, so yeah, I think that definitely would have helped. Um, Another thing that I didn't, I don't know, I, it felt kind of, I don't know, kind of forced. Like when uh, they're like, yeah, we're going to do the talent show. And she's like, no, don't do the talent show. We'll just do like a whole social media type of campaign. And, you know, we'll just get all these followers and stuff like that. And so then, you know, during the talent show, they're kind of sitting on the sidelines and stuff like that. Which, I mean, I think the idea made sense but like the execution of that whole mm-hmm. th- I don't know I, it just yeah. it didn't seem authentic it didn't resonate you know it didn't resonate, it didn't and, resonate. and so I didn't really care for it that much I was just thinking like okay let's get back to plot A right and get back right. to the comedy right and that's why I think the working. whole the whole school thing kind of drew because it was too much folk and that was like plot B and I was like, okay, we're spending way too much. And I have to say, it did have some comedic elements to that part of it, um, but it was just a little bit too much. I really liked the guy that was playing the boyfriend, Luke James, I think is his name. The guy from the new oh, edition okay. movie. Yeah. Um, I liked his character. I thought that was cool how he got so excited. Yeah. And uh, uh-huh. he, he was, she had was a daughter. daughter. And so I thought that was just. A different version of a black man that you don't yes. get to see in film and media, um, because usually that's you know their time for an exit. Um, the fact that he knew she was battle scarred and was still working hard to mm-hmm. get her to open up mm-hmm. and commit to him, mm-hmm. you know, you don't see these types, of, and that's what gets me so excited about where film and media is starting to head is that we are getting some diversity, you know, not just in color, but in character. Mm -hmm. And it's what that lady said. I'll come back to it a lot. You know, when you include women and people of color, just diverse people, it makes everything better. And to be able to see, you know, a black man that was able to have a sensitive moment like that Mm -hmm. is powerful, you know, because we have such an issue with toxic masculinity in our community we need more of that. Mm-hmm. You know, that was a shining spot in the movie for me. I thought that was yeah. adorable. You know, he was like, you know, I didn't know what to buy. I just saw pink and started handing out my credit card, you know, and it reminded me of Daryl because my husband is like that with my daughter. You know, he just start seeing dollar signs and he don't care, you know, whatever she wants, she gets. And, to you a detriment. <laughs> to a detriment. But, you know, you don't see a lot of that in media. You know, no, you don't see you don't. sensitive dads. Um, sensitive black dads, anyways. First of all, this is the thing I had a, <laughs> I had a, uh, I had a problem with believing. He said he was a, a street artist, right? Wasn't that his job? He said something. He, he said he was a, He does she, artwork. He does shows. I remember him saying something yeah, like that. Yeah, he did some shows. First of all, no, you are an exotic dancer, number one. <laughs> that used to be your profession at some point. Because he but he's a <laughs> Hold on, wait a minute, though. <laughs> But he's an artist. He's a creator. I know. So that could mean but, that maybe that's just like something he enjoyed doing because he's but, so creative. But he was so, I mean, the flip, it was. <laughs> and he loved that woman, girl. Yes, he was it flipping for her. It was like hard bodies. I was like, whoa. Like, I mean, I understand what you said. But when you are that good, you were a stripper. Like, stop. 
no, you you did more. I mean, but that's you like saying he was a starving because, artist. Hold on, that's when he was a starving on. artist. He wasn't. Hold like, on, you, know. you being a little bit sexist <laughs> here. I'm gonna have to stop you in your tracks. Stop me. It's plenty of black women that went out, took classes, or self teach themselves how to kind of dance or even do the pole for their man. So why couldn't he teach himself or go take a class and learn how to do that for his woman? Because it seemed like that was like their established routine. Like, he come in, do a little show, and then they have their, you know, intimate time. So, I mean, I don't think that that necessarily means he was a <laughs> He could have just been watching Magic Mike. It was Magic Mike. Girl, Girl Magic Mike is the worst reference. <laughs> that was the worst dancing ever. It, they should be ashamed of themselves. So they didn't rip them shirts off and spin on their no, heads No, he, he was that. doing more than, uh, than that. But anyways... It just made me laugh because I was like, "What kind of artist you talking about?" And he started talking about, <laughs> and then and then that was another thing. So he's doing this whole stripper routine, and this little girl is right there with this 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 friend, the assistant. He don't see his girl anywhere, but he is just going <laughs> full throttle. <laughs> Maybe he was just so into it, he just got lost, girl. <laughs> You know that bad bang girl. Once that bad song come on, you just be into it. Well, you see a little kid. I mean, to me, that's like. Well, he once he. I mean, in the scene, and he, he realized it, like, <laughs> he stopped. It was like, wait a minute, what's going on here? But see how that was good comedy because we can't, we can barely hold it together here. I know that was one of the best parts was, of the movie. We were was, in there laughing was, so hard. Y'all. I'm telling you. If you think the trailer was funny, there are some other parts that are going to have you screaming in there. Yeah. I was screaming. That Mary J. Blige, too. Um, yeah. There were a lot of hilarious scenes that were mm-hmm, not in the trailers mm-hmm. of this movie. And it was a comedy, and it hit hard as a comedy. Mm-hmm. You know, the mm-hmm. other parts, that's not the, you know, initial genre of the movie. Mm-hmm. And for me, I enjoyed it. It was a great I time at the it movie. Too. That was pretty funny, but um, overall, um, what would you rate this movie? Um, overall, I guess I would ma- rate this movie a C plus. Um, like I said, there was definitely some issues with um, the director as far mm-hmm. as getting the best scene out of their actors and actresses. Yeah, that was something that we didn't talk about. Um, this director. Um, Tina Gordon. She hasn't. This is like one of her first, not her first, but it's you know she hasn't directed that many things, and so I think that might have contributed to, you know, not getting those performances or just you know maybe she just let them kind of freestyle. I don't it know. does feel like that. It felt like a lot of it felt like B roll. Like mm-hmm. stuff you just catch them doing, right? <laughs> right, and, that, and that, like yeah. when you just being silly with the lines, like the uh-huh. leading scenes, uh-huh. Uh-huh. and uh, yeah, it didn't feel like there was a whole lot of direction given. Yeah, this. it felt like everybody, everybody was just doing what they felt, take. you know, was yeah. best at the time. I think that's probably what happened, and I mean, you know, it's a comedy, so you know, you, you do a lot of times give people that kind of free reign. Yeah, I mean, you, you don't come and that's into why, the comedy for the drama. Right. You come in there for the laughs. So, I think um, because it's a comedy, uh, I feel like, the, the depending on the genre, like I feel like the, the rating scale is going to be different because like mm-hmm. you said, like you're not looking at the story as much in a comedy. You're looking at, okay... Those punchlines, you know, different things like that, um, timing, stuff like that. But um, I would probably give this one as a comedy. I would give probably like a, a B minus, and that's because I feel like they, the jokes hit really hard for, like you said, that audience that they were trying to target, and so you know, a lot of people may not have been that audience. So you know, when you see reviews, you kind of have to take that into consideration and so with me taking all that into consideration you know who's in this movie who this movie is for what genre it is i would give it a a b and you know the acting is not the best obviously in comedies that's typically something yeah. that you'll see so you know given all of that i would give it a b okay so 
All right. Well, that's our review of Little. Make sure you check that movie out. Um, it's a pretty Definitely. good film. Please make sure that make we sure you support, support it. The diversity that we're getting. If we don't go out and make our dollars count. And we have a kid in the room. Make sure you go out and support black films. If we don't go out and make our dollar count, then we can't complain that we're not getting representation of us. So go check this movie out.